היי גייז! So another episode in the Platz Synthesis Model Series today we have Inharmonic String Modeling which is quite similar to Rings. Um, if you are not familiar with the series I will use only Platz in this model, in this mode as a sound source just to explore the possibilities a bit. So let's first of all see what we are dealing with. We have here the amount of uh, inharmonic season <laughs> how much inharmonic it will be and we have also the brightness or in this case it's the amount of particles and we have here the decay time so we can also actually trigger this get a familiar sound and from the auxiliary we get the exciter so in this case it's just a burst of noise which we can also use of course okay so let's really see what we can do with this I have a feeling for something a bit quicker today and um, so let's already take the BPM a bit up let's say hundred and no I'm joking uh, let's say 138 okay and now let's try, let's see, I'm already on a sequencer, sequencer, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I want a sort of an arpeggio sound, so I can do two things, I can use a sequencer, let's, let's try this one here, the modulo, the new modulo, and I can also do a different thing that we will uh, maybe uh, make this later, let's already use a multiplied clock, so we have something nice and quick, a 16th notes feel. Very nice. And let's see. Let's go with, um, let's say, C, E flat here. And let's make D, F, and here maybe another G. And maybe another B flat. No, one, two, three, four, five. Five notes is enough. Let's see. Let's use the triggers also. Let's see how this sounds like. Oh. Yes, this is nice. Oh yeah. Oh. Now comes the reverb. And let's do something like this. Let's use another sequencer. First of all here. We can change of course also the length here. So we can also create some variation here, but first of all, let's use another sequencer. I will use the ADDR. I will use the same clock. And let's here, let's use here, let's say eight steps. Okay, I will randomize it, bring it back to eight steps. Let's go with zero to 10 volt, let's say. And now we'll use this to modulate the morph. Just to add some movement to everything. We can also do this half time, so let's say the, uh, multiply it by two. And then use maybe a delay. Chronoblob. Let's do this. Uh, let's sync it also with the clock. sweat oh yes oh man oh ok 
okay, okay, let's do something like this. Let's use um, chance or chances, I think. Chances, yeah, from count modular, which is a Bernoulli gate, a one channel Bernoulli gate. Let's use the same clock, and I will take the probability quite to the right, so there, there are not so many triggers coming out from output A. And now we'll use the AD envelope from Nischi, which I love using for modulation purposes. A bit more attack time, just a bit more decay. This will trigger the envelope, and we will use this to modulate the timbre. What am I doing from here? Let's have a listen. Oh yeah. So every once in a while, maybe a bit less here, once in a while the timbre will be also modulated just for fun. Oh man, this is nice. Okay, now we can take another ADDR sequencer and use it to modulate or to change or automate or sequence. <laughs> we can use it to sequence the steps and get more variation. So let's use a divided clock in this case. Let's use, for example, divided by 16. Divided by 16, I will reset also everything just in case. Very nice. And now let's uh, randomize this again. Um, and let's use in this case four steps. And this will modulate the steps. Let's take step one to be zero. So there is no change in step one. And we will do something like this. Oh, that's too much. Let's take it not zero to 10 volts. Let's take it zero to one volt. Oh, yeah. oh yes, some variation indeed. Okay, let's add another one. And now let's do the second uh, way of creating arpeggios. I will use the note sequencer from JW. And I will use the same divided by 16th clock to trigger it. And let's trigger some random notes. And I will set, let's say, polyphon polyphony of three. So we have three voices of polyphony. And now we can use the ARP module. I like the one, or I'm, I know the one from um, Hampton Harmonics, but there are others like the Super Arpeggiator from Count Modular, the new Poly ARP from ML. I should, I should, I should experiment with them. There is also the Arpeggiator here from um, Amalgamated Harmonics. But for now, I will use this one. Um, so what do we do? We do we send the polyphonic output, the co uh, control voltage, the volt per octave, the pitch information to the volt per octave input of the ARP. And the clock will be the same clock, the divided by 16th notes. And now the reset will go also to the reset and we will also reset everything very nice. And now we will do this. The gate will go. No, no, the clock, no, the clock will be the multiplied, I will use a multiplied by four actually. So this will be the arpeggiated clock. Or the arpeggiating clock. Very nice. And the gate will come from the divided by 16th uh, clock. Okay. <laughs> so now, um, very nice. Now we get an arpeggiator. 
and it depends on the pulse width of the incoming gate so let's change the pulse width a bit to be a bit wider so we get more arpeggiation and let's see if it works like this some sort I will use another envelope another AD envelope and I will use a VCA because I'm triggering plats I cannot use the level I think I will try it but I think I cannot use it now oh, I can use it but no I don't want the level actually what I want to do is the morph this is what I want so we'll take the morph all the way down. Oh yeah. Okay, and now I will trigger this with the same divided by 16th clock. envelope is ending I want another envelope so here I have an end of cycle trigger so this end of cycle will trigger another envelope that will be a bit shorter and this will modulate the timbre it's never ending because the It's not coming to an end because the attack maybe in the case is a bit too long. Let's, let's try this now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Movement. Now we can also take this one octave up, which means that it will play the original octave and then another octave up, so six notes. Oh yeah. What happens if I take this an octave lower? Eh, uh, octave lower. No, I like this. Let's see if you can add a sort of a hi-hat with the auxiliary output. This is the noise. Let's send this to a filter, a high-pass filter. 
It will not be self-resonating. Oh yeah. Self-oscillating, sorry. And we can already use some sample and hold to modulate the panning of this voice, of this hi-hat. This is the same uh, multiplied by four. Here I can take the range a bit down. Very nice. Let's also use, uh, let's say, um, Vakumba. Vakumba, Vakumba to add a bit more interest to the sound. Oh yeah. You can also take here the lows a bit. Also modulate the cutoff of the filter. And the tone here on Vakumba. Okay, let's add another one, another plats, again in the same uh, model, the inharmonic string modeling. And let's see, let's try to add something more melodic maybe. LLFO, just to modulate the uh, frequency a bit, I need reverb. Oh yeah. Let's see. Um, FM. eight steps right and we have zero to one volt no we have four steps here but still zero to one volt so maybe I can just use a quantizer quantize this and maybe we'll have another uh, sequence let's see oh yeah I need a different sequence, but... Let's see... This is a different sequence... Uh, this is nice, but... You know what we can do? <laughs> Instead of using another sequencer, we can use Fate! To add some movement to the sequence according to the same trigger which is the divided by 16 according to the probability and the amount and let's have a listen
let's see what happens here the timber with with the auxiliary output no but something else that is um, in our at audio rate um, so let's use another lfo let's see take it out of slow So I need another LLFO. round hmm, to take the levels down even more so I bring the other ones up nice let's add another one see what what else can we get here there was some um, particles if I trigger this um, oh man this is a base. Okay, I need another sequence. Man, this is nice. So let's take the second output from Fate, which will uh, go negative, it will go down, which can fit maybe, I don't know. is this Noise. 
Let's do something with the noise. Oh, baby, what is this? Something happened to the bass here. Sounds more like a swarm or something like this. Maybe I can modulate the panning also with an LFO so it's moving left and right. And slower. This note here, what is this note? Ah, I'm using the trigger output. <laughs> okay, now it should do something. Man, that was nice, but with this trigger output. Trigger output to the volt per octave, let's see. Man, why is this? I don't know, but it's nice. We can just leave it like this. Happy accidents, happy accidents. And here also I will modulate the frequency of this LFO. Take a bit. Uh, just a bit, something like this. Oh yeah. Okay, so we don't need the quantizer. Sci-fi. <laughs> okay, I need some something with lots of delay on it. Let's use another one, the last one, let's say how many we have? One, two, three, four. The last one. And it will be also a sort of an arpeggio. So let's let's just use another sequencer a sequencer that has also maybe um, some sort of uh, phrases or something. I can use the uh, phrase sequencer, of course. No, you know what I will do. What can I do? <laughs> I had a, a thought and now I don't have it anymore. Okay. Um, what I wanted to do is create a burst of, of a burst of notes. So I will use the burst module from Rappelzen, and I will use. Let's use the grid sequencer. Let's make our life easy. It has also a built-in uh, quantizer and everything is nice. Let's randomize the notes. And I will have just two repeats. So we have three all in all. One trigger and two repetitions. Three all in all. I want a, div a clock divided by 32 in this case. So let's use a clock divider to divide the 16th. Or I can just use uh, the main clock and divide it by 32, doesn't matter. <clears throat> Sorry, it doesn't matter. So this will burst the noise and I will sync it with the multiplied by 4 clock. And this will, let's say, trigger the random function on the grid sequencer and the end of cycle will trigger new random notes. So every time there are um, the burst is finishing its cycle. We have a sequence, it will generate new random notes. Let's take the range a bit down. And let's take the pitch and the gates. And let's have a listen to this first, and then we will listen to it also with some delay. Oh yes, this is... 
this is exactly what I wanted. Let's reset everything. And yet, it's a chrono blob with lots and lots of delay. And that's all the rays also there. Um, reverb. This has to be a bit more in your face. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Even longer delay. Man, nice. Maybe ping pong. Okay, let's add also, let's edit the Lopez gate to be quite short. And I will add some FM with this Lopez gate because I'm using the trigger input, so I can use the envelope with the Lopez gate to modulate the frequency, which will add some punch maybe to the sound, hopefully. A bit. What happens here with this noise output, with this exciter output? Oh, this is harsh. Let's do something with it. The last thing we will do, okay? Let's add a VCA. Send it to the VCA. Add lots of reverb. We'll add maybe, will be sorts of waves. Let's take it down a notch. And let's see, let's have another AD envelope. Um, it's this one here. Let's see. the low frequencies out and also here let's modulate the panning here smoothly oh yes and what will trigger this will be another chance chances and it will get the input from the second output from the first chances and again it will be quite to the right let's see Let's listen to this a bit. What a nice patch.
Okay, so I think it's enough for today. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you enjoy what I do, consider becoming a Patreon. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell. And have a good one.